Hmm. That's different. Yeah, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a if there's a connection break between my compass and my um, and Python um, PyCharm because I cre also created a database in Compass mm -hmm. and I don't I don't see the same I don't see the same database in Py uh, in PyCharm. Oh. So I think yeah I think there's a breakdown somewhere of which I'm not sure exactly what will be the cause of that. Uh, yeah, because that it seems like they are not communicating. Right. You do one thing here, and you can't see it on the other, and you do the other one on the other side. You can't see it. Right. Maybe judge or help that one. What's the deal? Oh, hi. hey, hey, judge. So, uh, the I was just talking. I was just talking to the group about um, an issue I was facing. I think somebody else said they were facing the same thing. So. I created a database in um, PyCharm for Mongo, and I don't see, I, whenever I print the database list, I see the database, but in Compass, I don't see the database. So you wanna share your screen? Yes, one second here. Okay, let me know when you can see it. It's coming up. I hope it's going to be readable today, man. <laughs> yes, let, me, <laughs> let me let me change it actually real quick. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, so I created these databases here. Let me just run it again and show you. Yes. What's this in here? Yes, yeah, so when I run this, I can see the, the three databases that I created. So there's the teams, towns, and try. Okay. But now when I go to my compass, um, can you see my compass? Yeah. Okay, so here, I refresh and it's not showing up here. But then also I created this database here as well in Compass and I don't see it in um, in PyCharm whenever I print the list of databases in there. Okay. When you, the African rebel, you see it, if you don't see it in PyCharm? Yes. But do you see the other ones in PyCharm? So the, yes, the PyCharm ones, yes, I see them on here. So. I have these three, the first three here. Mm -hmm. I was able to see those. So I can see them here whenever I print the list here, but I don't see the one that I created in Compass. So and you... then these ones, as, these ones as well are not showing up in Compass, but uh, they're here. Okay. When you, create a, uh, when you create a table or a collection in Compass, did, did you have a chance to populate them with any records? No, I did not populate them. Okay. Try to populate them first and then see if you can see them. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and continue. But All right. Then you can get that, that. Okay, I'm going to take the sharing away from you, okay? Okay. 
area we've already installed and talk to the series and we talk to the, the road. <clears throat> so if we had uh, I'm gonna show you a, 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 just a, a very basic Excel spreadsheet here. We should be able to help you understand. And that's just uh, have a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will have column one, column two, column three. It could go even to several hundreds of columns. And then these are rows. Okay? A, a, a collection of those rows will fall under the category of data frame. A collection of those columns will fall under the category of series. And each and every row will have an index. So if you come here, we say we imported the pandas. This statement will import the pandas library to our environment. Then we use the two different panda libraries. So we have the row and we have the data frame. So the data frame will be all those rows collected together. It could be one to 100, it could be one to 200. And each and every column, when you collect them together, will fall under the series. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a code here. Okay. So we come back here. My column, I open a new file. I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So just click, I had a new one here somewhere. Click new file, open now. It's okay, you can open a new one. This is a, so we go ahead and did the install. Okay, of course, you did the pip install, which is just for the sake of clarity. Pip install pandas. And then we went in and we say now import pandas. But we do pandas as PD. PD is just an error. Okay. So what we are going to do now, we are going to go ahead and read the data set. That data set, we are going to save it inside a variable. Let's call that variable the, the data frame. Okay. So we say PD, whatever we used up there. Now let me let me show you this. Let's let's use this one as Nancy. Come here and use this Nancy. Okay. I, I normally do this so you so you know nothing is written on stone. It helps you to be more flexible. So we do that dot read, that's a read notation underscore CSP file. And then we open that file for reading. Remember you can use single or double quotes in here, but we come here and then we try to import. Let's go ahead and import the file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the importation. And my importation will bring me the file which we are trying to use for teachers here. So normally I do that, I say, and come back here and then all I can do here is just copy the path. Okay, close this one. Hope, hope everybody is seeing this. Are you able to see it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. So remember, I just imported a file. Okay, now this file here is local to us. And the name is teacher by status and county of secondary school.csv. Okay, so once we do that, 
now we can print it. Print what? We print, what are we gonna print here? DF. The DF, yes. Because the DF is now the variable. And then we just go ahead and run it. Now you see, everything is local to us and it's telling us how many rows? 192. 192 and columns are six. So how many sets do we have and how many data frames? Remember the data frame at the row. We have 192 data frames. Yes, and then we have six sets. Very good, thank you. Okay. Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you go up on your code. So where you have the df equals nancy dot read csv, this is where if my file is not in column, this is where I'll put the path, right? If your file is not in column, mm -hmm. this is where you put the path. That path, yeah. the absolute path. Yeah. Just like what we are doing in the other. Like yeah. equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Huh? Say again. Um, mine's not coming up. Okay. So let's find out. Can you share the screen? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, do you have this file in that directory and is it the same extension? Yes, <laughs> my culprit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. Okay. So go back to the code. So in, in a CSV right now, what you might need to do before the column C. Yeah. Before that apostrophe, you put an R. We are, we are reading. Make it raw? Read. No, no, no. R as in reading. Read. Before the column, I mean, before the quote, put an R. So we are reading. Now run it. Okay. Go ahead and try to print it. Rani? Oh, okay. So. <laughs> I'm also getting an error. Huh? I'm also getting oh. an error. Nancy, you're very far away in Canada. I can't even hear you. I'm saying I'm also getting an error. Okay. You want, you want to share your screen? Um. I see her from boys. Oh yeah, I had a question before she stopped sharing. To print, do you say print the F or just the name? I will not without... tell you. That's too simple to tell you. <laughs> That's too simple to tell you. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on. Make it make it bigger. So I can maximize. Yeah. Now, what are you printing? Okay. You're moving too fast for me. Okay. You, you see, you see, there's a problem right there, right? Yes. A problem, right? Yes. Okay. Now, what's the problem? Let let her let her just figure it out by herself. Ay 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 ay. This China Mandazi, you need to Tabisa. stop. <laughs> No, oh, Esther, we should blame Emily on this one. Now, Esther, why did you stop sharing? <laughs> Is that that's Esther or Nancy? Who, who was that? Oh, okay, that was uh, that was Nancy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Nancy. Let me start my problem. <laughs> okay, bring it back. Let's see. Let's see. Bring it back. You guys confuse me because I may thought it was Esther. Okay. Can you share the screen again? <laughs> I 
Nasty, remember we say panda mm. us. import pandas as who? Okay. Instead of PD here, you use Njoki. So use import pandas as Njoki up there. Can yep. I just use PD without uh, using my, a name? Like Njoki mm -hmm. or Nancy? That's on you because you're the one who chose Njoki here. If you use, you have to constrain. <laughs> And now running. Do we have this file where you claim it to be? Um, can I say something? Okay. Yes. She has CVS instead of CSV. Don't you say man, I blame Emily on this one. <laughs> Actually, you can change that name. On a CVS. Walgreens, if you want. Uh, <laughs> Walmart. No, Walmart. Any task is for your file as well. Your when file you come in here, <laughs> your file needs to, yes, uh -huh. I know. It's a CSV extension. Okay, now you can get it. I also blame him, uh, Emily. You are the one. <laughs> what did I do? Excuse me, can I see yes? Nakuona. Yeah, so now Esther bring us. Okay, my name mm. is I don't have a problem. I was just asking a question. Okay, that question is a problem. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, it is on someone else's screen, not mine. Okay, what's the question? Okay, let me share mine then. I think it's much. Personally, what I did is... Um, um, which screen am I sharing? Okay, I can't stop sharing. You see, I was asking mm -hmm. whether instead of saying print teachers data, you just write teachers data. Yeah, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See the same thing, right? Yeah, that was just what I was asking. That's, that's a good question. You instead of print, you can just echo, just put teachers data is gonna print it. Okay. Any other question before we proceed? Okay. So far, so good. Okay. So we 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 now know what series and what is a data frame. Now, if you if you want to see that, you can easily see it here. Now, right there, we can have. This, the whole of this is a data frame. And the whole of these columns is a series. And number zero, one, two, up to 191, those are the indexes. Okay. Yeah, I don't sharing? think you're sharing your screen. I'm oh. sharing. Thank you. You're only looking up. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so you see <laughs> from, from zero to 191, right? Those are the indexes. And all these are columns. And there are six columns. Those are series. And then this, all this, all the way to 192. Collection of all those rows will be data frames. So that is exactly what is depicted here. So far, we are good. Eh? You guys, I know you're falling in love with Pan. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Cool. So the next thing here, we have what we just did. We imported pandas. 
the series is a pandas data structure that represents a one dimension array like object containing an array of data of any non -type data. and an associated array of data labels called index. A series type object has two main components, an array of actual data, an associated an associated array of indexes for data labels. Yeah. Both components are one dimension arrays with the same length. So if you look here, this is telling you what an index is, what the data is. So this is very self explanatory. data frames. This is a two-dimensional label array like the pandas data structure that stores an ordered collection of columns that can store data of different types. So that pandas data frame is similar to Excel sheet or Excel spreadsheet and it also looks like it. Okay. So the fact that we have columns and rows, you know where the column row meet, that's where we have a particular data point. So pandas has a way of actually identifying those and we can pinpoint and be able to make changes to them if we have to. Okay. How to create data frame or how to create the pandas data frame. Now in real world, a pandas data frame will be created by loading the data set from a permanent storage. Permanent storage in our case is a CSV file. The CSV file could be in another server somewhere in Kenya. You don't have to bring it and download it. You can actually connect to it just using absolute value, I mean, absolute URL. You read it from there and then you bring it to our environment. Okay, in this case, we downloaded it and we brought it to our environment. So it's even easier that way. So these files can include and are not limited Excel, CSV file, MySQL uh, files, or SQLite files, or text files, log files. Okay, we just have to understand those are all there. So we can say, first we use Python data structure. Remember, we, we did the data structure in Python. If you guys remember, can you tell me some of the data structures we have in Python? We have lists. Okay. Anything else? Dictionary. Strings, integers, floats. Okay. So just remember in uh, Python, we have, we divide the data, the data types into two. We have the primitive and we have the non primitive. The primitive will be what Esther said. The non primitive will be what Joseph said. Now the primitives are like the floats strings. Okay. So if you can say the float is like the, numer the numerical value, the integers, okay. and also the float. So we also have the strings and we have the boolean. Those are primitive. So far you've worked with those all this time. Okay. And then the non-primitive, we have the dictionary. Arrays. Okay, we have the arrays. Sets. Mm -hmm. We have the sets. List. The list. And files. And files. Very good. Okay. So remember, those you can easily manipulate them anywhere you want, so long as you know how to get all of them from wherever they are. Now, using Python dictionary to create a data frame object, you can name it, let's say, this is a variable name underscore date. 
or dictionary. And then we pass it an array or a list of names. And then we say these are their ages. So the number of ages here and the number of names here, they have to match one to one. If we print this, this dictionary using primitive name, which is this one right here, you can print this or you can just echo this the way as the shape. It will still be the same. It will show us the output like what we have down there. We can create a pandas data frame out of this dictionary. So we have something here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, copy this and then run it. All right, let's see. I did this before, so I can't even get copy. Okay. Okay, first of all, we import pandas, okay? We import pandas as, as pd. Okay, and then once we do the importation, go ahead and say name, underscore, like this is short the dictionary, it goes to, and then we, all this dictionary will use this one. So we say name, So here, you can go ahead and now put this in a list. And uh, we have all the names, let's say this is gonna be it. Let's say Emily. That's gonna be Nancy. And, uh, not in any order, so don't, don't need to swap. So, this is a good for now. So you can you can actually save this. This is going to be saved in a dictionary. So you say, let's go ahead and create uh, what we call this a grades. Grades could be any number also. And then in there, we just pass a list. So we say uh, 13, uh, 15. Remember that has to match one, two, three, four, five. Okay. 16, 12, okay. Okay. So if we had one, two, three, four, five, this will be one, two, three, four, five. So that's good. So once you finish that, you have to and close it. Okay. And then you come here. And then you say P, F. Okay. Or well, you just say P, uh, P, F. That's a variable. And then you call P, D. And then you say data frame. Now we're dealing with the data frame. Okay. And then we basically, it's a function. So we say name underscore B I C T. Okay. Enter. And then we print this. Now, if we were to run this one, let's see what comes up. So we imported the data. I mean, the, 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 the pandas. And then uh, we went ahead and declared variable. Then we saved the names and the grades in that variable. And then we call PF. Okay. You can call this data frame, BF for data frame. And then you come and say 
the CPU of the data stream. So whatever we read, we kept it in here. And then whatever that is, we pass it the data frame function to give us the data frame, which you'll see shortly how it looks like. It's going to be looking more or less like an Excel spreadsheet. So if you were to print this out, this is what we have. Well, it's in that, so as usual. You have an extra calibrace, I think. Next to Joseph, the name. Or one less. Yeah, it should be, that should be the one. So thank you, friends. So this is what we come up with. Yeah. So as you can see, you can actually read in, uh, let's say, Excel CSV file, and you can have a data frame like we just did. Now the output for this data frame looks similar to what we have seen in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay? The only difference that the default index value for the first row is zero, this one right. And then it goes one, two, three. So that's the default. But we can overwrite that. Where in an in Excel spreadsheet, that will not be the case. So we can also customize this index value as per our need. So let's see, we can do the same. Okay. But we can do it minus whatever you see here. We can copy that code. Okay. And we run another one test it here, but this time around, we say, okay, those are the grades, but we are going to go ahead and print, print the, uh, print the, that, print that, but you say in an index manner, okay, equals to, this thing is just terrible. <laughs> Here we are going to put the numbers. I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if if the numbers if the numbers are five, this has to be corresponding to those numbers. So this this index this index here will override the index we have over there. Okay. Let's see how that works. So we go ahead and print this. Now you see we overwrote that. Okay. How is it feeling? Good. Good. Huh? Mm -hmm. Say again. Good. Okay. All, right. All right, so here, like you said, uh, that's good for that. So let me get that from there. Okay. So here, there's, that. there's another thing I want to share with you. Okay. Yeah, this one I got it online somewhere, but I thought good looking. I've, I've never read it, but let's go through it. So these are like um, somebody came up with this data handling using pandas. Okay. I think uh, might be able to be helpful here. So when we talk about pandas, pandas will most of the time work all by itself, but sometimes you want to visualize stuff. Visualization, we use another library. We call that library Matplotlib. This is a comprehensive lib library for creating static, animated, and interactive visualization in Python. We use it to create, for example, develop publication quality plots with just a few lines of code. 
Okay, we can use interactive figures like we can zoom in, pan out, and even update the data sets. We can customize and take full control of the line, line styles, font properties, the X or the Y axis, and their properties as well as export and embed the number of file formats and interactive environments. Okay. Now, we talked of Pandas already. So it is most, it's Pandas most uh, famous Python package for data science, which offers powerful and flexible data structures that make data analysis and manipulation and manipulation easy. Pandas makes data importing and data analyzing much easier. It builds on packages like NumPy and Matplotlib to give us a single and convenient place for data analysis <coughs> utilization. Okay. So data frame here. What we talked about the data frame, a group of uh, rows. It help a lot in keeping track of our data. By using pandas, data from we can have different data types. Float, which is float integer string, all those are primitives, okay? All in one place. Pandas has built-in functionality for like ease of grouping and ease of joining data for the data frames. Okay, rolling the windows, okay? Go good input output capabilities. Easy to pull data from my SQL database directly into a data frame. And that's probably what we're going to be doing with the SQL life. Now, instead of pulling it from a, data, a, da, a database, we're going to be pushing it to the database. Okay. With Pandas, you can use Patsy or R. R is another programming language. Maybe one day we'll be you be uh, fortunate to, to learn that. It's similar, almost very similar to Python, but it has also its good functions. It really makes it very powerful. Tools, uh, for pandas as tools for loading data into memory. Data objects from different file formats, like CSV, Excel spreadsheets, okay. log files, X file, name it. Okay, can also help you align data and integrate handling of miss, missing data. If there's a missing data, you can be able to fill them in. Okay. The, sh the shaping and pivoting of the data sets. And label based slicing, indexing, and subsetting of large data sets. Okay. This, I'll be able to send this out there so you guys can also have a look at it. Some of them we've already talked about, like how to import it, okay. How to probably install NumPy. There's some other libraries, which some of them will not be able to talk about. But when you read Fund Wide, you'll be touching all this. But they talk about this seriously. It's like a one dimension array like structure with homogeneous data, for example, this one. Okay. Yeah, they're all numbers, that's homogeneous. But if these numbers and uh, strings all in one set, then this will be what's the true genius. Okay. It's a data set here for like students. Student name, admission number, class, section, gender, date of birth. It's a data frame, two-dimensional array. Okay, as you can see, this heterogeneous, mixing, it's mixing it up. Okay. Find a series. Okay. It's like one dimension we just talked about. Capable of holding data of any type, integer string, float, Python objects, etc. Can create this using construct. So you can use the python.series, then we pass in the data, give it the index, like we just did. Just did that. 
in the index, and then uh, we can uh, give it a data type on the copy. So creation of series is also possible from, this is an array, which is, uh, you get this from, uh, if you read the NumPy, that's gonna be part of my NumPy. The dictionary is color value. Okay. Now a series can be created using this. You can use an array, you can use dict, the dictionary, you use color value or constants. Right, so here, and pick one, okay? This is how we do it, we just do this. Then basically we imported it, put it in a series, we gave it the index, then we printed it out. So you can see in, without the index, which we just did, and with the index, which we also just did on the right. When you receive this kind of document, or I, when I share with you the, P, uh, the PowerPoint I just did, please get time and practice this. Look at it from different angles. So reading alone is good, but it's not gonna do much. We keep a series here. It's color. So far, any question before we proceed? No. I'm good on my side. Okay. Okay. So whatever I'm showing you on the screen, we just do this. So this, this, this notes are thought were really nice and I'll be able to share with you. So you can also run them. See how they give you uh, the specifics. So let's go back to what we just did on the, on the homework we have. So Color. So we did this one right here. These are teachers, distribution of those teachers. Now, somebody help me, how do we list the first part in the list here? If we don't want to list everything, how do we get that? You didn't read that? Joseph, you mentioned it. Do you remember? Then in the head. Yes, sorry, sorry, I was speaking on mute. Uh, it's, um, so we will do, uh, the, I believe it will be reviews.head. Say again? Reviews.head. Okay. Say reviews. It will be DF dot head okay so what did you say again oh sorry oh i was saying reviews because apparently oh, well whenever i was working on mine it was uh, it was called review it wasn't df yeah so def dot head yes so head will automatically give you the first file correct remember it's starting from zero so this one you can even put an index you can pass in an index to give it some index numbers how about the tail the tail. <laughs> same, same thing, yes. Just def dot tail, df dot tail. Okay. So you can pass the tail. So that gives us the, the last file. Okay. So based on this one, can you think of a way wherever we can read this and then we actually import it into SQLite? Yeah. 
any 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 idea? Best I see is trying to say something. You want to mute? Um, I think I think it's the same as we are importing the CSV. Okay. What library do you use? Then? Now here we use pandas to read. We have already read the CSV file, mm -hmm. so we have the all the information. So it's just to insert the records into a database that we have created. Um. Hmm? And Panda? In SQLite. The database is in SQLite, yes. The, da created. the database is not yet in SQLite. So, <clears throat> um, Remember, the database, the, the data set is in uh -huh. the file. We bring it over, we're reading it. Now it's yeah. under us, but we want to import it or export it to go into SQLite. So we import SQLite. Okay, so that's a good one. And then? By importing it, we, we, we connect and then create a database. Okay. Once we've created the database, we create a table. Mm -hmm. And then from the table, we create using the series. The, yes, the series, like the other uh, column names are the ones we are going to use as the names of the tables The the fields in the tables okay. in SQLite. Okay. Then, then, then we insert the data frames as records in the in each of the fields in the database we have just created in SQLite. Yeah, very good. You hear that kind of sequence. You import it, then you save it into a variable locally. If you did already, as you can see up here. We call in here in the DF, and then we go ahead and import SQLite. Remember, SQLite is already in, uh, in Python 3.1. We just import it, then we read the we keep a database, and then, uh, the da then we create a table after the database. The table has to have these variables here, these are the columns, the year. How do you print the columns in a data set using pandas? Any idea? Did you read that? Uh, yeah, I read something like that. Can you remember? Control. Yeah, you remember call pd dot color. Don't you remember? Call. Pd. Mm -hmm. That c is it c? Yes. I think it's it has had it had c so. Okay. Anybody? Well, ask the question again. Okay. You see, you see the data frame here, the data set. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It has columns. Okay. And the, each and every column is a field. Mm -hmm. And those fields we want to be able to just pass function to see what those columns are. Mm -hmm. Any 
idea. So is it what when you create the table? Mm -hmm. And uh, using what Casa execute and putting all the mm -hmm. county school type and the data type. Yeah. So what you want to display the structure, the table structure? Yeah. Use um, con equal con dot execute uh, pragma table information. Using pandas? Pragma. Using pandas. Oh. Is in you're in SQLite, isn't it? At no, that point. Right now you are not using SQLite. You're in pandas. <clears throat> Did you guys read about column list or calls underscore list? Oh, yeah. No, I did not get there. Okay, Esther? I saw something somewhere. I got. I can. I know these calls, call, call, something. Just the syntax that I can't remember. Okay, so, calls underscore list. When you think that's when I look at pandas, you can search for that. In pand, let's say very Google, and then you say pandas, and then plus sign calls. You can't see. I'm not, I'm not yet sharing. Oh. Okay. What you can do here, so here, let's see what this can do. By just typing calls. Does that mean anything to you? Mm. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So it tells you this is the county, the school type, employee body, number of teachers, the county. And then you can go ahead and do what 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 of it you say DF describe. That gives us the description of everything. We just pass it to describe. That's going to be on there. Okay, so pandas has a lot of, we cannot cover everything, but we will cover only the stuff we need to use. If I say, uh, if I say column, Yeah. Let's say columns, it's gonna give us a column, really, right? Then I can say to list. To list is gonna be a function. I list it. You see that? Mm -hmm. I hope somebody takes notes. <laughs> this will be one day in your quiz. <laughs> I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. I'm breaking down the note. I mean the, the homework for you. You'll be having less work to do. Okay. So you can let's say you want to create you want to create your database. I just want to come and cook. This is this is already in a, this is in a list. So you can create your database from here. You just copy paste and then pass your cursor, your simple cursor to it. Okay. okay. 
So if we import like up there, up here, you see we've already imported pandas. Mm -hmm. If you are going to use, say you'll be using a SQLite, you also need to do the same with SQLite. You say SQLite, great. You can say CSV because you'll be using CSV, unless you want, you really want to use Walgreens or Walmart. That's the CSV there. So when you reach down there, then you'll be, let's say at one point on this same question, I say I would like you to go ahead and plot a graph. Then you can import Seaborn or import Matplotlib. So once we, we do this, then we come and uh, this should be free actually, not free. We come and uh, do our importation. So everything is in our environment. See Baringo, Elgoyo Marapet. These dates are probably the same. Those were the as of 31st of December 2014, probably the same time. So the date here will not be a big deal. You can drop everything, and there's a way to do that. You just remain with the numbers for the date. You just need, you only need like the county, county name, school type. The, body, the, the employment body, number of teachers. The county centroid, this one looks like, um, to me, looks like longitude and latitude. If you were to do any mapping with this, maybe, but you really don't need this. If you want to keep it as fine. And once you do that, then uh, you list it, right? You've already listed it. But remember, so far we've just used pandas. We have not talked or used SQLite or, or CSV. This CSV is gonna be used when you import, when you're importing or exporting into, into SQLite. Okay. So here, once you do that, you can actually go to the next level. This is where you need to say, you want to do a connection. So you say connect, connect what? Connect SQL, dot what, dot connect as a function. And then you call, if, if you have that as a database, it would be nice to now call it as a database. So you're gonna go ahead and create what? A teacher's database, that DB. If you did a teacher's database, now if you run this, we'll be able to get the teacher's database displayed. And then once you do the teacher's database, then we are going to go ahead and say, we are going to go ahead and say, whatever we did, we are now going to go ahead and streaming, streaming it into teacher's database. I will not show you everything here. <laughs> uh, I will let you struggle with it so you can learn to. Is that okay? But if you were to do anything else here, you just say DF. What did you save? You saved that, that to DF, okay? Whatever we ran came into this one. DF. Okay, so it came into DF here. And I say dot, dot what, two, another function, underscore. SQL, SQL. So, miserable. Okay. so we pass the DF Come on, man. This, this, is not, this is too much help. It's not even funny. Let's go ahead and close that. Close that.
You see how you get a lot of help to this thing. You're just popping up in here. <laughs> so here, what I want to type in the SQL, I want to pass the DF. Jesus. Okay. That is too much. I, I know there's a way I can, can block that from happening. Can you just remember right now? What, what I need to do here is to be able to pass inside the SQL, pass the word DF, okay? You enclose in quotes, comma, connect, CMM. Okay, so we go ahead and say DF. Comment, then connect. So this one. So once we do that, now we are getting the environment ready for our importation. So far, I'm going to leave it there. I will jump into something else. This is part of your homework. I'll send you this link. Let me go ahead and send it. Did you run that, Nigos? Run what? The last part. The... No, no, I did not. You want to run it? I'm going to leave it for you to run. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Just say, post your email, starting with? AJ, it's... Is that one? Yes, that one. Yes. Is that Esther? Is that your email, Esther? No, no, it's fine. Again? Yeah, that's my email. Okay. We are nine people here today, right? Eight. So you forgot to count me in too. I'm also human. But I've logged in twice. That's why I'm saying eight. Oh, okay. You did twice. Okay. All right. So Andrea is there. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna send this. You cannot edit it, but you can view, copy, and paste it if you want. Okay. How do you guys feel about that assignment so far? I'm trying to introduce it slowly. I don't want to bog you down. It's very interesting for sure. We can handle it from here. Hmm? I think it's good. You can handle it. We can pick it up, yes. This, this will be some of the errors you'll be getting, but you have, you have to run it from the top, the bottom. Should it be quotation marks? This one? Yes. Well, this is, uh, this what, is... This, if, if we say it's equal like here, okay? if I say us, SQL, then that will be working for us. But in this case, I can just go ahead and uh, say SQL like through here. If I run this one, it's going to work. If you don't complain, just 
make sure this one is consistent. If I did that, SQLite, then I'll need to import this separately. I can import. So if I run this, then I come back here. I can only get to that. This will give you an error based on what we have. Okay. We, we, we're trying to connect. Now, what's the error? It is not defined. So, those are some of the things to be looking to make sure we have them right. So, so far, this is, uh, this is doable. Any questions? This this one is pretty much the same. In the same way we created uh, we imported the SQLite and then we created the database. So if we run this, we should be able to run this just nice when I recognize the SQLite dot connect. Yeah. Feature. The battery features we pass the features. So here. Remember this one has to be in quotes. So you see now, it's a warning, it's not, it's not an error message. So if you come here, let's see if we have it. See? Can you see? Can you guys see? Yes. Now, here you can actually go and create your columns. If you, if you say you want to create a table, it gives us the table. You basically want to create a table immediately and create database. And then once you create the table, then you do the reading and then inserting into that database. Once you do the reading and inserting into the database, then you most likely want to declare another function, which is going to go back and read from the database. But this time pass it to the HTML table styled in CSS. How is Mongo doing for you? How is Mongo DB joining? You are able to join it? Yeah. Okay. You able to join? Can yeah. I how you join it? Can you share the screen? You're trying to share? Is, are you trying to share? Yeah, can I get some communication at least? Was that Brenda? Let me do. Who, who, who say they did? The connection, uh, they did uh, join in uh, SQL, I mean in, in Mongo. You say? I think Brenda. 
Okay, now Brenda, can you share or you just saying? Um, so I, I joined, but then I tried to do it again and it didn't work, so I have to do it again. But I can't show what I have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I've been wondering. I mean, why can't you just show us? Because I'm, I'm, I'm calling you all of a sudden, now you're going now. It was me? <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was waiting for screen sharing too. No, screen sharing is there anytime you want it. Okay, here you go. I won't take credit for this one. This was full help from Esther. Okay. <laughs> there. So uh, I tried it with just a few data sets. I was trying with a larger set. Mm -hmm. This one I managed to join the first sample that I had. So you joined the table based on uh, the hospital ID? Yes. Okay. Hospital ID in the table, doctor in table hospital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just a bit, can I see yours? I'm trying to open it. Okay. You're trying to fix the plane while it's flying? No, I'm opening it. You're going to Johannesburg and you try to fix it? No, I'm opening the my notebook. So, so I see the, the display here. So you, you're trying to import web browser, the library? Yes, I was. I used it to display, to open the web browser. OK. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can, can, you, can you run it so we see if the web browser is coming up? To get in another window. Huh? Oh, let me just try running from run it from the way up top. Everything. That's it. That's it. Can you hear me? That's it. You're already gone. Now, my question was, mm -hmm. I, I can't display the, the join, but I can display, I can display.
but I created this this I created this mm -hmm. and this is what I'm able to display but I can't display oh my god oh I created created the record twice and I ran it again mm -hmm. I can't display this the drawing did you save them in a variable like you did the other one here yes this when you try to display it has no display yeah I, I, this is what I was, I tried to do. Uh, hold on. Can you scroll up? Oh. Okay, right there. Let's scroll down. Scroll down again. Right there. Okay. So this day you are able to display, right? Yes. Display some Aries S. Yeah. When you try the one up up above, scroll up. Right here. You're not able to display that. Yeah. Are you displaying the joint cursor or are you displaying the J? Because now you remember them, they're now in J. Oh, they're in J. Uh, okay, this is I uh, wrote this. That's, that's exactly what the folder is for. Go look at the J, but transfer them. Go look in the CASA, but transfer them to J, and then this print the J. Here, like this is what I did for X and J CASA. Go, go back up. I'll show you. Scroll up. Right. Right there. You mm -hmm. see, <clears throat> you see in line 13, right? Join underscore CASA. Mm -hmm. Is taking the contents of the db.hospital.aggregate and yeah. then put them in the joint castle. Okay. Yeah. And then down here you declare a loop mm -hmm. saying, okay, whatever was in joint castle, mm -hmm. you want them all to go into J. Okay, and then print J. Now, if you're printing J, you need, mm -hmm. need the J, not not the join cast. So if you were to declare mm -hmm. this and then try to display that in the HTML, the way you do it with the A. Oh, so like I, I'm supposed to change um, this to J? No, 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 no. How did you display the A? Whatever was working for you. Yeah, this. Okay. So, which, which program when you run is bringing you this, the, the display on the browser? Which, which? This one here? The one you have? Yeah. So, json.dams, where is that coming from? I was changing the dictionary into a JSON. Okay. But what, what, okay, what's the, what's the content? Where do you get the Y from? Oh. Why you getting the A? Yeah. If whatever is in the A, you bring it to Y, and then you declare a new variable. And then you say, whatever that new variable is, you want to change that JSON.dams. So if you did, you take this one, okay, instead of mm -hmm. A, the J. Now I'll try run it. Okay. 
so you can you can actually walk through it. Go back, just make sure to get all the changes. Now remember, you probably don't want you, you probably don't want to display them as JSON. Oh, okay. You want to display them as HTML files. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. So should I say put that them again, in? George? Huh? Say that again. You don't want to display them as JSON files. You want to display them as what? As HTML file. It's an HTML. Remember, I said display is display it in the HTML format. So should I put it in a table? Or how yeah. uh -huh. you pass them the tag tables for HTML? T H table header. Okay. And then you pass all those uh, columns and rows. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So I see uh, I Brea. And I see Emmy, uh, I see I see Ruth. Now you guys came in and you're so quiet. How can you help us? How can you contribute to this uh, to this discussion? Any ideas? Anything you done? Where can you talk? The uninstalled. Yeah. So, in there? Yes, I mean. Okay, so far, what, what, what have you done? What can you help? Uh, any ideas you can use? For the Mongo MongoDB, okay, I'm just started working on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by preparing, I just completed my setup and all, so I'm planning to work on it in the course of the equal. For now, I've done not, not done much on the same. Okay. Yeah. So uh is Joseph back? Joseph, you had an issue with the with the Mongo in uh, the Mongo campus, were you able to resolve the issue? So I still have the issue. Um, I uploaded data into into the, the the collection and still was having an issue. So I I removed that cluster and I created a new one. So now I'm working to see if the new cluster will be able to pull in the um, the databases. Let me just confirm real quick. Okay. If you share your screen, I can try to help you. Okay. All right, I'm sharing. Let me know. So when you create those tables, you have to be able to populate them, the, 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 the collections. Once you populate them, you should be able to build them among the company. Okay. So basically, so I deleted everything. Let me see if I restart it now. Run this. Okay, so it's still not showing up uh, despite having, so I do have some data in one of the uh, databases here and it's still not showing on there. So you create the data, uh, create database of all of them. Yes. Then uh, you create another one, you call it 
Yes. And then I created the try as well. Okay. And then where, where do you want to put the things? Can you just keep one? You don't have to keep all these at the same time. Can you just do one at a time? Keep one if you want to. Okay. okay. So I was trying to insert it in Teams. Um, so let's see, let me drop the other ones first. So that, so that's what this is Teams, but what's the collection? You're inserting into the collection, what's the collection name? Uh, I think. Good morning. I think I think I think I created the collection as teams as well. Let me change it to something else. So here. Now when when okay, when you run it, you want to start one. Can, can the rest so, the mute? If you don't have to talk, can can you guys mute? Sorry, Judge, can you say that again? You are not audible. Uh, I'm saying some of the people are not muted, so we're getting a lot of bugging. You know. okay. So when, when you do the, when you create a database, you call it Teams, okay? Okay. And then you create a collection, call it names, it's gonna sit inside Teams. And then you're getting the names of Jayo Mundi and Atlanta, Georgia. You put Correct. them, you're gonna go into the names. Correct. Okay, now line 10, all the way down, just just comment them for now. So run. So it was successful. Okay. Now go into your campus. Yes, yeah, so it's still not loading. There's something not right because there's, there's something uh, we've done. I remember we did it with Emily, I did it with. Uh, Brenda, it all worked. So let's go back and uh, this one right here, the, the, uh, the compass. Go, go ahead and log off. And then log off. Okay. In compass or atlas? Compass. Okay, Shut down and Because I see you have eight collections. Hold on. You have three databases and you have eight collections. So you see the hosts are three. You most likely have two secondary and one primary. You might not be looking at the right. So close and then go back to the Okay. We have a Guide and connect. Mm
Can you unmute uh, Joseph so I can talk to you? Okay. Oh, so I was saying mm -hmm. it's not connecting right now here. It's not authenticating successfully. Will it be because I already have these two connections of active? Hello? If you cannot connect this one, most likely it's not Okay, because I have these two connections here. So there's the one that's saying I was connected seven minutes ago. So if I think, if I click on that, it would connect to it. So can you click on local? Can you, can you try to connect to the other one? I hope. You have like three. Sorry, connect to the previous one? Yeah, you have like three hosts up there. Which one are you connecting? Yeah, it doesn't exactly show me which one is connecting to. Okay. Can you click on admin? Yeah. Can do that one. In uh, config, do you have to import anything? Do you need the information? No, uh, I've not have okay, I, I don't think you are completely done with your setup. Go ahead and click on import data, and then I'll show you uh, while it's doing that. You want it in CSV or? Uh, yeah, just pull, let me pull a CSV file. Okay. No, don't, don't worry about this for now. Can you go, okay. can you go into your Atlas and log into your Atlas? Yes, I have it on here. Okay, click on connect. Click on connect. Right here. And then here, you want to connect to Mongo campus. Right. Okay. And then here you go to the Mongo DB campus. So go ahead and take this. Those two, yeah, those two. Copy those. And now you can close. And I change the password. Did you do this before? Yes. So go back into your code. So line one, two, and line one. Should I run it again? Okay, run it again. Okay, so it was successful. Let's see now. Okay, go back into your Atlas. Okay. 
to close close this one right here. And then I'll go back and click on connect. Okay. Now, instead of uh, go click on connect the application. Click on this. Connect. Sorry, which one? Oh, the application, okay. Yeah. Copy this. This one here? No, no, just make sure it's a uh, Python. Yeah. Okay. okay, and then change it to 3.6 and the bar and letter. And then copy, copy the, you see those two, um, yeah. Copy those and then you can close this one now. Okay, let's go back to your code. Okay, let's see. enter and then create a space between line three and four. Press uh, paste it here. And then go ahead and uh, put your password. Okay, now you see instead of uh, more local, open, yes, copy that bracket all the way, the, the left bracket all the way to the end. No, no, the one up, the one higher up. Okay, you can copy this and paste it in there. Okay, copy in the local, uh, replace it with the more local. Okay, now go ahead and uh, comment this one. Right? Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, run this and see if we can create it. Okay. okay we an error. We need to do the installation. Did you install DNS Python? Uh, which one is the DNS Python? Just, just do the pip install DNS Python in the library. Okay. It's installed. Okay. You wanna go ahead and refresh and then It's running, yes, but it's just slow. Okay, so here. Okay. You see line 15 up there? Line 15? 16. 16, yeah. And, uh, Instead of saying remove the execution. Sorry, can I say that again? Uh, it's not clear. Oh man, you're in a noisy place, man. Remove the X picture. Okay. This very hard to hear you, man. Okay, no, no, you see what I mean? X picture to just leave the, the rest the way they are. The, Oh, okay, so just remove. Yeah. So we are going to go ahead and insert, but we don't put it in another variable. So go ahead oh, okay. and insert this one. Shouldn't take that long. Right. Is he supposed to import on uh, DS DNS? 
Python? You already did. You installed it. You can, oh. you can import it if you want here. You can go ahead and under the Mongo, go ahead and import the, the DNS Python thing. Looks like there's an error there. Yeah, it's not coming up. Emily, you just worked, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have that code with you? The... Yeah, I think I do. Let me see. Uh, Joseph, see this cluster zero shared. Go back, go back into your, I'll, I'll show you, go back into your, into your atlas real quick. Okay. okay. And then go into your network access. And then, uh, yeah, it's already have it. So you should be able to be free. On the IP address, that yeah, okay. Now, uh, that current IP, okay. Hope this works for everybody else. If this doesn't work for you, this is a good time to let us know. Yeah. Go back to your campus. Thank you, Yeah, what is authentication? The last one? Yes. Yeah, yeah the big problem with you. I, I'm not really sure. Go back to your atlas again. Go back to your atlas. Go into your network access. Then go ahead and delete the the, 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 the this one or the or the the one it created? Both both of them. Okay, now scroll down. Add IP. Allow us to continue. From that.
I'll go back to the report. I had a run to him. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure what exactly is with this. Yeah, it must be something to uh, cause the certificate failing. Yeah. This is very unique. Let, now, Emily, yeah. bring your up so you can show me. Hello? Yeah. Mm. Let me. You ready? Uh, I can share. So I know we spe we ended up specifying the four. 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 and then okay. So it, it worked. Can, can you run it again up there and see? Unfortunately, Maybe. we are able to do the client. So you are doing both? No, I had just commended it up. I was using local. Okay. So let me first start my Atlas. Yeah, Compass or Atlas? Atlas, you just log into it. Oh, Compass. And then so connected to what to the yeah. You know what number five is for, right? The what? If you look at your line of code, line mm -hmm. of, number five, you know what that is for, right? Yeah, this one is to con. You're creating the database into your local. Okay. Yeah. And then the and then number four creates it in Atlas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, if you run this, you mm -hmm. are able to create this on both local and on your Atlas, right? When I when I run which both without commenting number five. No, uh, if you run okay, you can run both and let's see what it does. But I'm assuming health database and hospital collections already exist. Yeah, in the local. Okay, so are they already in the atlas? No. Okay, now you can run this so you create them in atlas too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me start. Do I need to run here? Everything. So if someone ran, so I go to Yeah. Oh, you can see. Let me share. Let me share. Okay. 
Yeah, it appears. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's just as simple as that. So I, I'm not really sure what is happening with the process, but something tells me there's something blocking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, if you go into your atlas, let's go, let's see what you have. And my and also did yours, and it should be working the same way. Is there a hospital known as the Quete in Arusha, Tanzania? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there is. Maybe there is. Because I know the, I think the airport is called by that name. Mm. So am I sharing? Okay. What are you trying to share? Atlas. Okay, you're not just sharing Atlas. You can stop and then we share. Okay, now you're sharing. Okay, so go to my connection. Mm -hmm. Oh no, collection. collection. Yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's go back into your code and then add add more hospitals and then we, we execute it and then we come back and see if we have anything. You can okay, just, add, yeah, just change the hospital IDs. Okay, then, once, one let me share. So, are you sharing? Yeah, it's already sharing. Okay. So just change then. Just, just the IDs and then a few names. Is Nancy sleeping now? Hey. <laughs> I know you, all this time you're already going to bed. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh -uh. See, Kone, I to Brenda a good night too. Because Brenda all of a sudden now is going to mute. Ah, see, you kill him to present Badu. I see an error. Muk was very active, Niki, an error. Okay. So you run it. And then once you run it, go back. Mm -hmm. uh, and comment line five and then comment line four. Okay, and comment line five. Oh, okay, so I can create a log. Yeah. Okay, now let's go into your local first. Okay. Do you anything to do with the uh, Mwanza, Nairobi, Mwanza, and Kanunga. Um, campus. So this is my sharing. No. Campus, Clanton. Okay. One second. And the hospitals is it hot? Okay. Yeah. So it has ten. So it's added. Okay. Scroll down. Scroll down. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Kanunga was new in all the mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. Go into your atlas. You should have the same record added to atlas. Okay. Sharing it. Let me sh oh one sec. Okay, so I'll just refresh. Yeah, it's 10. Mm -hmm. okay. So we know your program is working both the local yeah. campus and also on the cloud atlas. Yeah. Nothing is blocking it. And the same code, click on the code base. Let's see. That's the same code. Uh, okay. The code. Okay, scroll it. Scroll it. Okay. Okay, now, hold on. Okay, for local. Okay. Nancy, are you, is yours working? Both local and uh, international? <laughs> <laughs> the cloud are not yet, but uh, I'm adding more records to the hospital table to see. So the cloud is not working for you? Yeah, not yet, only the local. Okay, you want to share so we can yeah. discuss that? Okay, I'll stop sharing. Thank you, uh, Emily. Mm. Yeah. Joseph, just stand by unless you have any, anything else you want to do. Uh, we should be able to figure you out. Uh, George, so uh, I was looking up the error. Actually, they say that there's... um the certificate issue it's a it's something that's affecting mostly uh, mac and linux users so like i have to run a certificate command to install the certificate so i'm looking up how to do that right now okay cool cool thank you okay now nancy mm -hmm. okay did you uh were you able to successfully connect and be able to see all your collections here did you create anything new yeah, I've not finished entering some new records in the hospital table. But you still don't have any hospital. You don't yeah, in the cloud, but in the local, I, I have. Okay. So let's go back to your code. Take, take us back to your code. Yeah. While you are doing that, somebody wake, wake Esther up. Esther, I see you on camera, you're sleeping. I'm not asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, you. Esther, you are, you are working good? No, I'm still trying because it's only printing the first line. In your Mongo? Like, Oh, oh, MongoDB is working if my uh, atlas and local. So this is going to be for local, Nancy. So, so when you do this on local, it, you are able to put records in the local? Yeah. Okay. So go back into your atlas when you're done with it. Let me just finish this line. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So Abrea, were you able to go to this level with your MongoDB? Uh, yeah, I have 
uh, I was able to connect to the cluster, but I have not started the coding process. Okay. Yeah. You can always reach me, okay? All right. Right behind. All right. So go into your atlas and then you want to copy something here quick. That's what we done here. The atlas. All of a sudden, I didn't start a JVT error. You know why it's saying it's not defined because you have to run it up, up there. All the way. You have to import it to the first line. Don't log out. Just run this line three. Run, uh, run this line first. And then run the next line. And then the next line. Can run this one. Run this. The third one, the. Yes, this one right here. Run it. Okay. Now, some records are already existing. Okay. So, scroll down. Care is not defined. So care, care, what are you trying to do with that? You trying it's to- It's just a name. Yeah, but, but it's a DB, not care. It's not just a name. Instead of care, put a DB because that's the variable now we keep the healthcare in. No, 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 Nancy. Hmm? Line five. Instead of care, change it to DB. Because, no, Nancy. You said line five. No, it's line five here, where you are. <laughs> Scroll back up. Instead of care, you see that uh -huh. care? Uh -huh. You see line four? Line four is DB equals connect healthcare, right? Yes. Okay, now connect, you got it from line two, right? Are you following? Uh -huh. Okay, now line five of the same. Instead of using care, you have to connect it you link it to line four, which is DB. So instead of care, put DB. No, no, no. Don't worry. No, I'm really worried now. Why instead are you of, worried? Instead of care, instead of the word care. Health? You're not listening to me. Maybe I'm speaking uh, Chinese. Okay. You put this back to where it was, healthcare, okay? And then you see my call one equals to care and then bracket hospital. Instead of that care, change that to DB. Okay, that's exactly it. And then now run it. Now this error will not come up. Okay. Okay, now here, scroll down. Let's see what error is this. Name colon is not defined. So if you run this one, it will run because now the my colon now is being recognized. So just run this one. Okay. See? Sure. So if you go into a local, you will be able to see Nova Scotia, Bangati, Coptic, and Kenyatta. So go into your local, that's going to be your compass. George, I fixed it, uh, by the way, so it's showing now. The SSL is good now, right? Yes, so pretty much just had to import the SSL and then make it then make the certificate as equal to none, and then now it's working. Very good. So you are able to see the collections? And, uh, yes. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so Nancy, uh, can, you, yes. can you open your campus? Okay. Okay. okay, now you see, we added those into here, okay? So this is good. So let's go do this. Go back into your Atlas. Okay. Okay, in your browser.
browser. Okay, now click on the loop of uh, going to, yeah, no, 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 not, not that one. Not that one, no. Okay. While we're here, let's go ahead and click on add IP address. Click on that, add IP, the, the green button. Okay. Just click allow access from anywhere. This will not compromise in any way. It's just local. It's going to be easy for us to confirm. Okay. Now you see up at the top left, go and uh, just wait for this one to finish first. And then we go into clusters. Okay. Everything good? So Ruth, I'm assuming you, your system is working up this level, right? You can just answer me in, uh, in the chat. Nancy, click on clusters. Click on uh, connect. Okay, and then uh, here, go into connect your application. And then Python, that's good. Copy this. That's good, you're good there, you're good. Just copy this, copy. See those, no, no, no. You can use those uh, icon on the far right here. And then uh, go back to your cluster. Uh, mm -hmm. Cluster is the application. I'm sorry, go back into your campus. The local? Yeah, campus always oh. gonna be local. Atlas is the is in a cloud. Everything good? Can see. Okay, now here, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is good, but uh, I would like you to take me to your code, the code base. Sorry, the code. Your pipe, uh, what do you call it? Notebook, not, notebook. Okay, here, scroll up. Okay, right now, you see line six? Yes. In line six is line two. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to, in line three, paste. In line three, paste. Control, paste in there. There's something in your clipboard. Now here, Whatever you had, like Mongo local twenty seven zero one seven, instead I want I want this line. Change the password first, and then you paste it in there. Or you have two different I lines. Have yeah, you have to you have to put your password in here. Remember your password. No, you have to remove the tags. Nice. Remove the tags. Mm -hmm. and then type finish it. Yeah, that is it. That's, that's it, Nancy? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Now, go into your line two, copy from con all the way to the double quote. Line two, con all the way to double quote. No, no, double quote the first one. I'm not getting you. Line two? Yeah, and then you see this. There's, there are two quotes by the first one. Copy to that first one before the Mongo did it. Copy, yeah. copy to copy the quote too. 
copy the double quote too. Oh man. <laughs> nice. No. Okay, what I want, I want, there are two double quotes, but the first one is on the left, and then in between there's a string, right? Yes. Okay, now I want you to copy up to the first one. Highlight and copy up to the first one on the left. Okay, right there. Now copy that. And then okay. in line three, go ahead and paste it next to the word MongoDB, the far left corner. First one, first character. There? No, no, no. Before the MongoDB, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then scroll on the right, scroll to the right. And then after the word majority, put double quote and then close with a bracket. Double quote, double quote, Nancy. Okay. Now go ahead and comment line two. Comment line two. And then now comment. Okay, now run, run this code. Run it. Okay, scroll down. There's an error. Okay, go ahead and install DN, DNS Python. Scroll all the way up. Okay, just below the line three, after an import Mongo, go ahead and after import Mongo. Yeah. After import, okay, I'm sorry. You see line one? Yes. Instead of installing PyMongo type, install DNS Python. Replace the word PyMongo with DNS Python. Line one, huh? Yeah. Install? Just type In DNS Python. DNS Python. All one word, DNS Python. Can now run that. Give it a few minutes. Give it a few minutes when I run. Okay, now line below line three, on line three, just enter line three. Here, line three. Enter press, or run? Yeah, press enter. And then import. You don't want indent it, just import DNS Python. Don't, in, don't, don't indent it. Python, Python, DNS Python, Nancy, yeah, yeah. and then don't, don't indent it, don't indent it, align it with the first one, Nancy. Okay. There's a problem, when it's red, it's a problem. Make sure they're lined up. Okay, the first line also put it, yeah, press space bar so it can go. Okay, and then the second one, space bar. Yeah, that's good. Now run those. Okay, DNS Python, uh, scroll back up, we just install it. Okay, go ahead and restart the kernel. Restart the kernel. Up, up, up in the menu, there's a kernel. Up in the menu. Okay. Restart. Can I run it again? Give it a few more seconds. Okay. Yeah. No, 
Ayrıca Prayrani. Try run it again, line one. Try run, run, run line nine again. Let's see if can we install it. Run it again. First one, yeah. First one, first one, first line. Yeah, run this one. Okay. Let's Can you put on the exclamation mark in front of peep? I don't know whether that makes a difference, but. In front of well, that's, um, that's normally good, but it's, it it works in uh, in collab. Even here, if you want, sometimes you can use it if it's not being recognized. Yeah, that's I I did that on Jupiter, so I don't know. Well, you can you can try that, Nancy. Next to the before the tip, just put exclamation. Nancy, not not there, please. Uh, before the pip. Yes, we got. Before the pip, there's a pip install. Okay. So before the pip. Yeah, run. Exclamation, then run it. See if, if it's making a difference. Okay. So that's package 2.1.0. Mine had the same error, but it talked. It talked? It worked. Oh, it worked. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see if Nancy's is going to work now. Nancy refresh by starting the tunnel. Thank you. So what did you do differently? Nothing. I it it I installed it. I kept running it, but it was saying module not found. But when I ran the code, it worked. Okay. Cool. Sometimes it takes a longer time. Okay. Let's run it again. Second line or first one? No, the first the the next line, the second line. Yeah, this one. Let's run it. Okay. Why is it saying module? Okay, go ahead and uh, copy the in line one. You see the second line import DNS Python. Co copy DNS Python. Copy import DNS Python. Copy that. And then cut it. Control V to cut it. Got it. Then uh, create a new line. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Then paste it on a separate line here. Uh -huh. Paste it there. Then go ahead and run it again. This one is fast or this? You can run both of them. It's okay. Yeah, I don't know what it's going on there. <laughs> it will work for you. For some reason, it's not working. Emily, did you have to specify the, the version? Yes. Okay. And it's um, uh, the exclamation mark pimp install DNS Python, mm -hmm. then two equal signs. Okay, put, put it two equal signs, Nancy. Equal, equal. Okay. No, it, 
um, 2.0. Did you mean two equal signs like compiler? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Point zero. And then 2.0.0. 0. Pardon, Emily. The equal sign and then 2.0. Uh-huh. Point zero. Point zero. Okay. Yeah. Now run it. There is no space between uh the yeah, delete that space. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks like this one is doing it differently, so <laughs> very funny. I run this to a list. Uh, uh, go ahead and restart the kernel. Yeah. Esther, did you have to restart the kernel? I worked with the code that the module, when it was said module error, not found, I just worked with it like that and everything worked. Okay, let me ask you again if you understood. Did you have to restart the kernel? Yes or no? no. No, no. Nancy, go ahead and run this. When you import Emily, do you have to import with specific version? Or just import? Uh, just import. Yeah. It's very strange, but I know it's going to work eventually. It's not a problem. So, okay. I, I mean, uh, Nancy? Yes. If you're not busy, maybe after class, I can connect with you and then I see if I can remote into your system and fix it. Okay. That's fine. Okay, anybody, any other question? Anything you think you can do differently? Or you want to give us some more either? Or something you discovered or invented? <laughs> I was able to create a JSON file. Okay. For health. Okay. Yeah. You want to see it? Yes, please. Oh, okay. One second. Mm -hmm. Let me try to open it. Mm -hmm. So yours is working perfectly, okay? Is that correct to assume? Your Mongo Compass and your Mongo Atlas all are working correctly? So this is the joint health of uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. So you was it good? You've already joined it? Or yeah. How did you join it? Um, just uh, <clears throat> with the help of Ruth. Okay. I mean. I mean Esther's. How did you join it? Let me let me share. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is a code I want to see the join function as well as Google look up from doctor, local field, hospital ID, memory primary field, important piece hospital ID. When you run that, you get it down there. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this, the one you, you producing down here is what we want to be able to put in a table to display. Okay. Good, yeah. 
Um, hmm. All right. I'll have to. <laughs> You're looking good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. okay. What do you mean updating the records, Ruth? All right, if, if there's no any other question, uh, I think we answered everything we introduced. Now we, we are going to go ahead and uh, go very deep into data science or machine learning by sharing more and more libraries and more notes. Feel free, please, if you have any question, ping me. Or if you're available, then you can uh, remote into the system and work it. Okay. If there's no other question, then uh, we can go ahead and dismiss. Uh, Nancy, I'll, I'll, I'll call you here shortly so I can help, okay? Okay. Okay. Any other question? Otherwise, thank you guys. Sante. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night.